Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rinse till at a time, back with a good friend of the channel and CEO of Hemlane, Dana Dunford. How you doing, Dana? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Well, it's the holiday season, and it's also winter. Winter brings snow, rain, cold, hard time to do turnover sometimes. So I thought we should talk about winter turnovers. What do you think? Yeah, so there's a, a couple of things I would say to it. One, if you have a property that is vacant right now, our data shows that November and December are really slow because people are getting ready for the holidays and they don't want to move right beforehand. Mm -hmm. It will pick up right afterwards. So usually that first week of January, you do see a lot mm -hmm. more movement. It's actually a lot more than we see in March and um, February, mm. February, March, I should say. So from a demand perspective of tenants, if you feel like, gosh, I'm not getting enough leads now, you still have hope. Yeah. Um, Good point. You have that hope for that January. Make sure your pricing is right because you don't want to miss that January turnover because February and March are much slower. Um, however, um, one thing I would say is it really depends on where you are. And, um, you know, seasonality does play a role. Um, mm -hmm. So a lot of people on this channel are in single family homes. Mm -hmm. And with single family homes, a lot of people have children in school districts and don't want to move within um, within the school year. And so you see, that's why you'll see a lot more tenants come through during the summer. Mm -hmm. It's also cold in certain areas and people don't want to move in snow or rain like we have here in Northern California. Um, they want to move during the summertime when it's much easier. Um, the reverse is true if you're in like Arizona, it's like yeah. too hot during the summertime. So they do want to move now. So yeah. I, maybe it's not winter move, um, winter turnover, but more of seasonality and knowing your market. Makes sense. Um, but the thing that I would say about it is when you put your advertisement together, just do the standard 12 months. Because if you say it's like a six month lease, tenants are like, oh, is it short term? Are they moving back into the property? Right. And, and they might just consider writing off your property. So still make it a 12 month lease, even if it's a January or February turnover. However, once you find a qualified tenant for your property, that's when you sit down with them with the lease and you might say, Hey, would you be willing to do an 18 month lease instead of a 12 month? That is great advice. Yes. And then say, if you do an 18 month lease, I will go ahead and lock you into this rate for those 18 months. Mm -hmm. And then it's beneficial to the tenant as well, because they're like, oh, they're not going to increase the rent. And then now you're getting on to a summer turnover. Yeah. And um, so you can think about that, even if you just extended it a tiny bit to get you closer to that summer turnover, mm -hmm. it really does help um, with the properties. And what's interesting is multifamily already does that. So apartment complexes, um, when a tenant goes through the process, they'll get options. If you sign a six month lease, it's at this price. If you sign a nine month lease, it's at this price, mm. 12 month at this price, you know, 14 month. And they do the calculations based on those turnovers and when they see the data of when it's hot for people to move. And so you basically want to do the same thing with your portfolio, what the, the big leagues and the um, institutional investors are doing. You want to bring that to your business as well and follow something very similar and those trends. Yeah, I kind of want to iterate to kind of two themes that I took from this. First and foremost, the slowest time of the year in my rentals is December 15th to, through January 1st. Yeah. It's just like if I don't, I, I'm sure it's happened over the years, but that is, that's like the two week window. So if you have a vacancy now and usually you fill it in two weeks, this is kind of like that one two week period that you can write off. Like, don't don't change your pricing because you get nothing over the next two weeks. This this at least in my portfolio, these two weeks are year, year over year just always the slowest. So know that going in. Don't be surprised. Uh, and then second, I love that idea. I've seen lots of new landlords talk about a six or eighteen month lease right in the advertisement, where they should just do a year lease, which is keeps them on par, keeps them uh, in purview of all the tenants. And then when you talk to them, go, hey, do you want eighteen? Uh, I thought that was tremendous advice. I hope everybody caught that subtlety because if your ad said six months, so you get on the summer term, you're going to miss a lot of people because they think it's a short term or, or something else yeah. is going on. Yeah, exactly. And then, and then they know when, after they've met you, gone through the process that like, oh no, this is really a mm -hmm. rental property. They're not converting it back to their home where I'm going right. to be 
freaked out and have to move. Yeah, moving is expensive. Moving is time consuming. No, certainly nobody wants to move in six months on purpose twice. So yeah, I j- don't don't be that landlord that says uh, you know six months. Yeah, do the year, make it a standard, and move forward. So Dana, great advice. Uh, how can people find you, uh, the company, and talk about the uh, thirty day trial? Yeah, you can go to www.hemlane.com um, and then click the try for free and mention one rental at a time. Um, so you get 20% off your first year, but you do have a free trial for 30 days. Um, so you won't be charged anything um, during that time period. Very, very cool. Thanks, Dana. Great. Thanks, Michael. Mm-hmm.